In this video, we're going to be talking about some introductory vocabulary for graph theory. Hopefully, you have a printed out version of the handout uh, in front of you that would be helpful for this video. Um, but I'm basically just going to be showing a few pictures um, that go with the vocabulary words on the handout. So first, let me just say that when we talk about graph theory, um, we are talking about not x, y graphs. We are talking about graphs, just a collection of vertices and edges. So here is an example um, of a picture of a graph. So notice we have our vertices here. The vertices are labeled in green, A, B, C, D, E, and F. And then we've got our edges, which are just you know lines connecting the dots. So we want to look at a few of our vocabulary words here. So for example, edge set. Um, let me come back up to our picture. So the edge set for this graph, well how do we describe edges? In general you describe them by writing the oh, whoops. You describe them by writing the two vertices associated with the edge. So for example, AC represents this edge here. Or similarly, BC represents this edge here. <clears throat> okay, and there are a couple of special types of edges that you can see in this graph. One is this, what's called a loop, and that is an edge that starts and ends at the same vertex, and you would write that just by listing that vertex two times. So BB, that's the loop. Okay, and then we've got a few more, BE, DE, EF. Okay, so let's put those down. So BE, D, E, E, F. And then we've got these two edges, and they both go to and from the same two vertices. So what we're going to do here, so these are called parallel edges or multiple edges. And what we're going to do here is just list that um, pair of vertices twice. So D, F, D, F, one for each of those two parallel edges. Okay, so this is our edge set. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine edges, and we have listed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I missed one. So what are we missing here? It looks like we are missing CD or DC. <clears throat> so let me also just take this um, second to note here that the order that you write these things in doesn't matter. So for that last edge that's missing here, I've got CD, that's the missing edge that we don't have in our list yet. I'm writing it CD just because that's alphabetical, but there's nothing wrong with writing DC. Okay, the order of these is the order of these any two vertices is not really important for now. It will be later when we get to something called a directed graph, but for now the order doesn't matter of those two. Okay, and the vertex set is a little easier to see here. That's just going to be all those vertices labeled in green. So in this, it's going to be A, B, C, D, E, and F. Okay, so here's our edge set and vertex set for this graph. Um, you can see on your handout that the order of a graph is the cardinality of the vertex set. So that just means the size. So here there are six things in our vertex set, which means that the cardinality, um, the order of this graph is going to be six. And there are nine edges. We counted them earlier. There are nine edges, which means the size of the graph is nine. <clears throat> okay. Now this graph is not what's called a simple graph because it has a loop and some parallel edges. So we call a graph simple if it doesn't have these things. So let's look at a couple more graphs. Okay, so neither of these graphs is simple either. See, you've got this loop here, so that means it's not simple. But without the loop, um, it would be a simple graph. So for example, this in green is a simple graph, whereas this is not a simple graph because of the loop. Similarly, this is not a simple graph because it has these multiple edges here in a couple of places. <clears throat> also, let me just take a second to note that all this in purple over here on the right side of the screen is a single graph. 
there's nothing that says that all these things have to be interconnected. So I've drawn it in a single color here to indicate that this is all just one graph. In fact, this is what's called a disconnected graph, and this is a connected graph. And we'll get a more precise definition of that in just a second, or you can see it on your handout. But for now, let's talk about the difference between walks, paths, and cycles. So, a walk is a sequence of vertices such that you go from one vertex to one of its neighbors. Okay, and what is a neighbor? So, for example, if you look at X, its only neighbor is V. Okay, because there's only the edge that leading away from X only leads to V. Versus if you consider the neighbors of V, you could go to U or X or Z or W. All four of those are neighbors of V. Okay, so a walk is a sequence of vertices that begin somewhere and end somewhere. So in this case, it's going to begin at X and end at Z. And it's a sequence of vertices such that every vertex in the sequence is followed by its neighbor. Okay, so here we'll start out and we'll have X. And then we'll go to V. That's the only neighbor that we can go to. And then for this walk, I'm going to go to W. That's a neighbor of V, right? And then I'll go up to U. And then I'll go back to V, and then I'll go to Z. Okay, so this is an XZ walk. We went from X to V to U, or rather to, to W, to U, to V, to Z. So it's just a sequence of vertices. <clears throat> As opposed to a path, Let's look at, say, an AB path. The only difference between a path and a walk is notice over here that we repeated this vertex V. We visited V twice, and that's not allowed in a path. So, for example, um, our AB path might be A, C, D, B. <clears throat> okay, now, it's worth noting here that this AB path is also an AB walk. Um, so a walk just means that you're allowed to repeat. A path means that you cannot repeat. Okay, similarly, what if we try to make an EC path? Well, we can see that there's no edges. There's no way to go from neighbors of these and end up in this portion of the graph. So in this case, there is no EC path. And because we can find vertices, E and C, such that there is no EC path, that is what the requirement is um, for the description of this to be disconnected. So this graph is disconnected because there is two vertices, so like E and C, for example, that don't have a path between them. Versus over here, every pair of vertices you choose will have a path. So for example, if you wanted a Y, U path, you could go Y, W, U. Or if you wanted a VY path, you could go V, W, Y. Um, so this is a connected graph because there is a path between any two sets of any two vertices, and this one is disconnected. Okay, so now let's talk about a cycle really quickly. So a cycle is a path, so remember that means you can't repeat vertices, and it begins and ends at the same place. So for example, we could have Y. W, Z, Y. That would be a cycle, right? We go Y, W, Z, Y, and that closes up this sort of triangular loop. Okay, another example of a cycle would be um, just X, X, right? If you begin at X and you end at X, then that's going to be a cycle. Uh, and let's do one more. How about U, V, W, U. So cycles are only allowed to repeat at their front and back vertex. So essentially you're just sort of closing the loop, right? You go from Y to W to Z back to Y, or from X back to X, or U to V to W back to U. So this is a walk, a path, and a cycle, and we've also touched on what it means to be connected versus disconnected. So by the way, in a disconnected graph, like the purple one over here, these individual pieces that are connected are called components. So this purple graph has two components versus the connected green graph on the left, which has a single component. So it's a connected graph. 
All right. The last thing I want to touch on is the idea of degree. Um, and the degree of a vertex is the number of edges that meet at that vertex. So, for example, the degree of A is going to be 1 because there's only a single edge at A. Okay, and the degree of B will be 1, 2, 3. Three edges meet at B. The degree of C will be 1, 2, 3, because three edges meet at C. And then we, I've included D here because we want to figure out, okay, well, a loop is a single edge, but it hits that vertex twice, so how do we account for that? And the, <clears throat> it ends up being that we account for it by counting all of the ends of the edges. So in this case, the degree of D will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So a loop is going to contribute to to the degree of a vertex. So that's it for this introductory video. More next time, um, so stay tuned.